If you could time travel back 20 years and tell anyone that SpaceX would one day become more successful than NASA or any other big space agency, they would probably laugh at you. Heck, I would have laughed at you too. Not because they doubted Musk, but because SpaceX was a very small startup that many expected would go bankrupt in a couple of years. Fast forward to today, and SpaceX has established itself as a leader in the space industry. They have introduced many innovations to the space industry, but without a doubt the most game-changing one is rocket reusability. Simply put, this means using the same rocket multiple times for different missions. It's a huge deal because it significantly cuts the cost of space travel. SpaceX's journey with reusability began with the Falcon 9. Launched first in 2010, the Falcon 9 was designed with the idea of reusability right from the start. But it wasn't easy. The first few attempts to land the Falcon 9's first stage didn't go well. The rockets either missed the landing target or crashed hard. Things changed on December 21, 2015, when SpaceX successfully landed the first stage of the Falcon 9 on solid ground at Cape Canaveral, Florida. This was the first time an orbital-class rocket landed back on Earth after delivering its payload to space. It was a game-changer and proved that reusing rockets was possible. After this, SpaceX kept improving its technology. They added landing legs and grid fins to help control the rocket's descent and ensure it landed smoothly. They also developed drone ships, like Of Course I Still Love You, and Just Read the Instructions, which allowed rockets to land in the ocean when they couldn't return to the launch site. The next big step was the Falcon Heavy. First launched on February 6, 2018, the Falcon Heavy is essentially three Falcon 9 rockets strapped together. This makes it the most powerful operational rocket in the world, capable of carrying much larger payloads. The Falcon Heavy even launched Musk's Tesla Roadster into space. What really stood out was the recovery of two of the three first-stage boosters, which landed simultaneously at Cape Canaveral. This was a clear sign of how far SpaceX had come in perfecting rocket reusability. While the central core booster didn't make it back successfully on the first flight, SpaceX kept refining their techniques. While this is called reusability, it's important to note that it's partial reusability, not full reusability. Initially, only the boosters were reused, while other components like the payload fairings were still one-time use. You might think the fairings aren't a big deal, but they are. A Falcon rocket fairing costs around $6 million, and SpaceX realized they were wasting millions of dollars per launch by not reusing them, so they had to come up with a way to reuse the fairings, too. SpaceX started testing the recovery and reuse of payload fairings for their Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. Unlike other companies that considered fairings as dead weight after launch, SpaceX saw potential. In 2019, during Falcon Heavy's second successful mission, Musk announced that SpaceX had recovered both halves of the rocket's fairing for the first time. Musk confirmed on Twitter that both fairing halves were retrieved from the Atlantic Ocean without damage. Since SpaceX began reusing fairings, they have successfully reused more than 300 fairing halves. Initially, fairing recovery was a significant challenge. These large structures, which protect payloads during ascent, were often discarded after their job was done, turning into debris. Early attempts involved using ships equipped with large nets to catch the fairings as they descended under parachutes. However, these ocean landings were unpredictable, and catching fairings mid-air proved to be difficult and inconsistent. Recognizing the need for a more reliable method, SpaceX adjusted its strategy. Instead of attempting to catch the fairings mid-air, they allowed the fairings to splash down in the ocean and then retrieve them. Although this approach might not seem as impressive as mid-air catches, it is far more reliable and significantly reduces the risk of damage to the fairings. The fairings are designed to be waterproof and undergo thorough cleaning and inspection after retrieval, including the removal of any saltwater residue and refurbishment of damaged parts. To enhance the success rate of fairing recovery, they now use specialized ships equipped with advanced tracking and recovery equipment, which has significantly increased the success rate of retrieving fairings intact. This method not only saves millions of dollars per launch, but also contributes to SpaceX's goal of making space travel more sustainable and affordable.
In the beginning, SpaceX used various ships to monitor and retrieve fairings. Initial attempts with ships like Go Searcher faced numerous challenges. In 2018, SpaceX introduced ships named Ms. Tree and Ms. Chief, which were fitted with large nets designed to catch the fairings midair. Despite several attempts, catching the fairings directly in the net remained problematic. Consequently, SpaceX transitioned to a more dependable method by allowing the fairings to land in the ocean and then using cranes and fast boats to retrieve them from the water. SpaceX equipped the fairings with attitude control thrusters and steerable parachutes to control their descent more accurately, increasing the success rate of soft ocean landings. By late 2020, SpaceX was routinely recovering fairings, with several fairing halves being flown multiple times on different missions. In 2021, SpaceX introduced custom recovery vessels named Bob and Doug. These ships, equipped with advanced cranes and nets, are designed specifically for fairing recovery. This method not only minimizes the risk of damage, but also allows for quicker turnaround times for reuse. When we see a newcomer like SpaceX putting in tremendous effort to recover rocket parts and reduce costs, it raises questions about why government agencies like NASA aren't doing the same. Instead, NASA continues to use traditional, expensive rocket development strategies that cost billions and often achieve less than what SpaceX accomplishes. Take their Space Launch System as an example. This rocket has been under development since 2011. By the time it launched its first mission in 2022, NASA had spent roughly $23 billion on its development. In contrast, SpaceX developed the Falcon Heavy for about $500 million, with its first successful launch taking place in 2018. One of the most striking differences is the cost per launch. The Space Launch System costs approximately $2 billion per launch, while the Falcon Heavy costs about $90 million. In terms of payload capacity to low Earth orbit, the Space Launch System can carry up to 130 tons, whereas the Falcon Heavy can carry up to 70 tons. Despite the Space Launch System's higher capacity, the Falcon Heavy's cost efficiency and partial reusability make it a preferred choice for many missions. Reusability is where SpaceX truly excels. The Falcon Heavy is partially reusable, with its side boosters capable of landing and being reused. The Space Launch System, on the other hand, is entirely expendable, meaning every component is used only once. This not only increases costs, but also has a greater environmental impact due to the need for more materials and manufacturing. SpaceX managed to develop and launch the Falcon Heavy in less time compared to the Space Launch System, despite spending significantly less money. Furthermore, the Falcon Heavy has already demonstrated its reliability with multiple successful launches and recoveries of its boosters. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.